Hey, welcome to another installment of Catching Up with, I'm Sam. I'm Chris. I'm Jake. I'm Josh. And we're, you know, here, we're always here. I, I always like to say we're back, but we never really actually go anywhere. We just kind of... Well, we go home. We go home. I don't. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I, so, I live here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He lives in the geek lair. Um, you know. I don't call it that. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> you know, should. We all should. we all have jobs. Sometimes we'll you know go home and play Wii U or just crank the shaft or both. But uh, you know, isn't that what the Wii U controller? No, that's the original Wii. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's that's the Wii man. That's especially when you play the mini games in the uh, Wii. <laughs> yeah, well, in Mario Party, uh, Mario Party Eight. It was all the motion sensor controls, like shake your, shake the remote as fast as you can. It was just like there's no way they didn't know, <laughs> right? <laughs> Who knows? I the don't Japanese know. Japanese are not this repressed. Yeah, though their birth rates are down. Oh, uh, interesting. Hmm. Aging population. A lot of that uh, in the uh, in the Asian world. But the and it, to move on to other things, you guys have anything interesting happen this week? I started watching Heroes Reborn. I watched the uh, first the two episodes the the double episode premiere pilot. Yeah. Welcome to the club. Yeah, I'm watching it for Henry Zabrowski. Ah, yeah, he's a he's a podcaster of a, a, a couple a, a show that I listen to called Last Podcast on the Left. It's a horror show, but uh, after like 50 episodes, they started getting really into like uh, conspiracy theories, occult stuff, and it's hilarious and it's great and it's it's very much a, 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 along my interest level. And it also plays to the character he plays on the show. Yes, he's basically the same. Uh, like when I started watching it, uh, and like his uh, his character really debuted, I was like, ah, oh, he's just like he is on the radio because it's just in the show he's like this conspiracy theorist nut uh, who's falling around the, uh, the 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 horn rimmed glasses guy Noah, yeah. whatever the hell his name Bennett, uh, Noah Bennett, yeah, or sure. as he was known in the original series before we learned of his name H R G because yeah, of the sure. glasses, yeah, even though they're not horn rimmed, but yep, uh, but uh, so. He uh so he's like stalking horm uh, horn uh, HRG, that'll be easier to say human growth hormone. Yes, exactly. Uh, except I'm aware that there's no R in human growth hormone, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and there's an extra H. <laughs> uh, but um, so uh, he's stalking him because he's because uh, he knows what uh he was doing in the original run of the series, and he's like, I need answers, and of course HRG uh got his memories eaten by what's his name his old sidekick and the Haitian sure uh and uh that's about as far as I got uh more or less but it's uh it's pretty interesting and I'm just excited for um more conspiracy theories with Henry Zabrowski well if you really do enjoy the character there was a uh web prequel that came out leading up to the series called uh, I want to say Dark Matters Ooh. that starred him and his sister who he's searching for in the show. Right. Yes. And it's sort of the journey of his sister discovering she has abilities uh, honing them and then kind of getting abducted and then leading up to him searching for Noah hmm. and then finding him right at the series beginning. Nice. Nice. Other than that, I have like no idea what's going on on the show because it's all characters that I haven't seen before. Uh, even if they were on the original show, like I stopped watching after season two. So I haven't run into anyone other than HRG and the Haitian that yeah, I recognize. Uh, past season two, there's really no one else that returns from the original show so far that yeah. shows up. So you're mm -hmm. fine with one to get later oh, on recognizing and, um, people. And what's his name? The guy that uh, they keep blaming for all the terrorist attacks. Oh, Mohinder. Yeah, Search. Mohinder. Yeah, he was on the show. Um, yeah, now I'm like, maybe I should go back and watch the stuff after season two so I know what's going on. Is it a, So it, is it a relatively fresh jumping on point if you had never watched it? Is. It is. Like they, 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 it, there's been a, a big gap within the show, uh, just like how there was a big gap uh, here for us uh, watching it. So they kind of like uh, they they reference that there was that there there have been these people evos as they call them evolu uh, a fighting game tournament yes <laughs> uh, people you know evolved people and they're like there's been some rocky relations with them in the past and you know this and that uh, but now we're kind of stable and then like this big uh, explosion goes off and kills a whole bunch of people so now it's like even worse so that's the jumping on point for everyone so it it, it really doesn't require it's it's not necessary but i like i i 
as as myself a completionist like i kind of feel like i should how, how many seasons did it run past two or that's how a, how many full seasons was it that's a josh question ran for four okay. seasons yeah okay. When you saw this, because another you know show that's seen quite a hiatus is coming back in January. When you saw the um, the X Files miniseries, was that kind of fresh, or did that requ- really kind of was that steeped in the lore of the show? No, uh, it's actually it it, it, it as well uh, was a pretty decent jumping on. Like point. I could jump on and yeah. watch the that the first. Yeah, episode. you're gonna you're gonna be like you uh, from the best that I can tell. You know, mm-hmm. not being someone who's new to the show. Yeah. Uh, I, I watched feel the finale when it aired for note for some <laughs> stupid reason. <laughs> I feel like I feel like this episode will make a lot more sense than that episode. Probably, yeah. Uh, it, uh, no, it, it seems like a you know a relatively uh, first you know pilot episode kind of thing. So like they there, it's clear that everyone has a history. Okay, but I feel like they don't uh, latch on to it so hard that you're going to be lost if you don't have that because that's always something that was very important to the original, you know, creators of the X-Files because you got to remember that 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 show started in a day and age um where uh the only way to rewatch an episode was if you were there and you recorded it on your VCR. True. You know, they didn't have, you know, they didn't have a uh, streaming uh online, they didn't have on demand stuff. It didn't get they, syndicated until like season 3. Yeah, and and there were no DVRs. Uh so yeah, you um if you missed it you were shit out of luck unless you had a friend who watched it religiously and recorded each uh, each showing. So they they're they're very aware that their audience or they're they're, they're very um, used to writing for an audience that hasn't necessarily seen the show. And even even with their first movie, their big thing was we want to make it so that new people can watch this as accessible as possible. Exactly, but still be entertaining for the religious fanatics of the show. Not just in general religious yeah. fanatics. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm sure there's cults around X Files at this point. Yeah. yeah. Josh, <laughs> have you? <laughs> Our Lady Dana Scully. Yeah. <laughs> I can neither confirm nor deny. Of course, I want to believe, but uh, and so do they. But uh, I mean, I think the big thing is we all, most of us, <laughs> let me amend that. Most of us saw the new James Bond movie this past week. Yeah. Yep. Um, Spectre. Mm-hmm. A little more it, than half of us saw it. Yeah, seventy five percent, seventy five percent. But uh, it, man, talk about a divisive film. Seriously, yeah. Like there are people like, and I'm seeing this like on Facebook. I'm seeing this on Twitter. I'm just like hearing this because apparently people take my word as gospel for James Bond movies. They're just I like, don't know why. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't make the mo- movies, motherfucker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but the uh, like, they, I've seen some people that are like, just as good as Sp- Skyfall just as good if not better than skyfall on that end of the spectrum and then on the other end of the spectrum like forbes just published an article this past week saying that it was the worst bond film since a view to a kill which was 30 years ago Mm. um what a wonderful view to to a kill kill. (laughs) yeah damn but at least it had had, that had christopher walken what a way for roger moore to go out though yeah he didn't like that's his least favorite bond film yeah well you know well view to a kill also has an oscar winning villain as the specter but um two-time Oscar-winning villain in uh, Spectre with Christoph Waltz. But, yeah. Um, what did Christopher Rockin win for? Deer Hunter? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, but, yeah, it's... I fall somewhere in the middle in the sense that it's, for me, it's without a doubt the worst Daniel Craig Bond movie. Um, and a lot of people are like, how can you say that there's Quantum of Solace? And then my thing is like, here, if I have to watch a mess of a movie... I'd rather watch an hour and forty minutes than two and a half hours. Yeah, that's I, the that's the the really sole difference between those two movies. The biggest thing that I've heard because I'm the I'm the one that didn't see Skyfall or the well I'm, I mean I didn't see it in theaters, but uh, and and I think uh, Quantum of Spectrum. Solace, Quantum of Solace, or whatever in terms of like run runtime is more consistent than Spectre yeah. is. Spectre maybe you could pitter patter a, 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 a consistent movie together and cut out an hour but yeah. you know but uh but yeah the main critique that i've been hearing is that you feel all two and a half hours of this movie mm. yeah and that's a lot to ask of an audience in, if and there's, it's and, not and here's the cause, like, sorry the martian was two and a half hours yeah and like i it, they did a great job of tricking me into thinking that it wasn't two and a half sure, hours yeah. and i and, and and here's the thing too like bond movies are very good at making long films not seem long 
which is why when we were when we were going into Spectre, I had I, I was not I was not concerned whatsoever about that, you know. Um, I was like, two and a half hours, bring it on, man. Like, Daniel Craig's movies have been rock solid. Like I said, even Quantum of Solace, it, it, it fizzled out towards the end. Yeah. But it, it was a it was All a but Quantum of Solace is over two hours long. Yeah. Um, yeah, 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 exactly. And like so... Every Bond film, like, <laughs> like I think Casino was second only to Honor Majesty's Secret Service. Mm-hmm. Skyfall was longer than Honor Majesty's Secret Service, and Spectre's longer than Skyfall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I, I've said it a couple times, but, like, I haven't... I don't remember seeing a movie that has a line in it that perfectly sums up the movie to me better. And there's that, it's in the trailer too, where Mr. White refers to Bond as a kite dancing in a hurricane. And that's how I view Spectre. That and the fact that it's a Roger Moore Bond film starring Daniel Craig. It's like, it, for me, it just is this weird mishmash of like some like super awesome Daniel Craig like moments. a Frankenstein yeah. of a film some really badass like Frankenstein's monster some really <laughs> badass opening like the opening no, it's scene the doctor <laughs> yeah yeah it's, yeah it's the doctor I reflect the monster <laughs> like the opening scene is fantastic you know there's the but Batista for them you know is a, is a great like Jaws-esque odd job villain um and you know uh, Christoph Waltz is, is fairly good and as, as the villain and uh Don't touch it yeah god <laughs> um but you know, it, it's in, and you get you know you get to see more of um, Ray Fiennes M, which is just like a dream casting because he's just so fantastic. And we get more of Q. Um, I like it when yeah, Q and M and Money Penny get more to do than just like sit in the office and watch 007 have fun from afar. Yeah, but I, yeah. but it becomes like uh, towards the end. Uh, maybe there could be some spoiler territory, but like there's a, there's a moment when like they all like gather, and it's like, is this? Am I, is MI six just fucking four people? You know what I mean. Like I want to see. Like I remember they mentioned D- 009, You know, uh, later on, and I was like, I don't want like Double Nine to team up with 007. But like I, w- I would love to see. Well, we remember the last time two Double O's tried to team up it didn't exactly yeah. go well. Um, but I mean, in the idea of like, let's see more. Uh, you know, of of the Double O's. Let's see more of of MI six. You know, and I know that this movie is very much about like getting rid of the double O agents obsolete. And it's like, yes, we hear that like somewhere and like, it feels like in every James Bond movie, they're like, it's obsolete with well, this uh, one just, man's going to show the last you. two. And yeah. it kind of makes sense with Spectre. Cause if you know, they should still be under in they theoretically still be under inquiry. They had in like golden eye too. It's like, you know, you're a fossil. What are we still doing this for? You well, know? yeah, she's like, you're a cold war relic. Yeah. Um, yeah. not so much that the program is a cold war relic, but that he is. Yeah. Like, and yet that whole movie was about how the cold war is still kind of going. Yeah. Well, it's more like trying to like Russia's trying to identify like what do we do post like Soviet, you know, post Soviet Union, and God, he kills so many Russian soldiers in that movie. I'm just thinking about it now. I'm just like, God, they're just protecting a government building, and he just mows and destroys like <laughs> Saint Petersburg. Shits, he kills a dude <laughs> shitting, you know, or he, he knocks him out, he but like then out, he just yeah. like goes ape smiles shit about and, it too. Yeah. So yeah, I don't you know, man. I, uh, that was. The definition of a shit-eating grin. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just it, it just for the most part, it was uh, it was a mess, in my opinion. In Josh- my opinion, Joshua. Um, yeah, it felt like there were a lot of moments that could have been saved for another film, like a direct continuation of it. Like it could have ended right into something, and then another film would have picked up I right think, after. Like, um, I think the producers are scared of doing direct continuations after Quantum of Solace. <laughs> mm. But yeah, like. <laughs> Well, outside of it not succeeding that well financially. Well, it did well financially. Okay. Yeah. It just wasn't very well liked. Yeah, it would, like got pretty ravaged by the critics. I feel like that was one of those ones that did well in the theaters, but not on home video. Whereas now, home video is kind of where you do your research. If it does, if it does well on the theaters, great. If it does well on home video, you made a you know a star. I mean, like, I was expecting this one to sort of, like, be the real birth of Spectre for either Craig's Bond or if, you know, they leave him, whoever would pick up. But this one kind of introduces and ties everything up in a way where, okay, we can just end Bond right here. We don't have to do any more. Well, where Skyfall does a great job at homaging the past with Bond, this movie does a fairly poor job because I feel like the movie knows it's sinking at points and it's like, hey, remember the Aston Martin from Goldfinger? Or it's like, hey, you remember Blofeld? Or, you know, hey, there's a pussycat, you know, which I actually thought that was clever how they got away with it. But there's so many moments where it's like, hey, you remember when 
they did this back in the 70s, you know? And it's yeah. like it was like this life, these floaties they were throwing out to Daniel Craig. Well, it's, I did find it interesting that there's more Easter eggs towards, like, classic Bond films in this than there are in Skyfall, which, mm-hmm. you know, is the 50th anniversary film. Yeah. So you'd think they'd be like, nothing but fan service! But then again, they did that in the 40th, and it failed yeah, miserably. and they <laughs> threw in so many jokes, and, like, with Q being more out in the field, like, with the uh, bras and ones where he's at the uh, car dealership yeah. going to give him his car well, and I mean, things I, like that. I, I like Q being out in the field because, like, I mean, like, Lice is the Kills one of my old t- is my favorite Bond movie. And he's, like, that's, like, the most involved Q, like, up to that point really had ever been. Yeah, yeah. certainly Desmond Lillian. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this Q. one felt like the greatest detractor from what made uh, Daniel Craig's Bond his own mm-hmm. where he was you know much more forceful much more serious he was a little lighthearted at times but not as much as yeah. this one throwing jokes left and I, right I, I enjoyed some of the more lighthearted moments because that's something that he's had he's had it in all the Bond movies but I feel this is clearly the one with most of it but it's clearly like the trajectory right the entire point of Casino Royale is he's too much of a diamond in the rough he's too much you know he's too taciturn and that certainly is explored in Quantum of Solace and then Sky Falls where he starts to lighten up you know mm-hmm. he's cracking jokes when yeah. he feeds dudes to Komodo dragons yeah, yeah. and uh, and then he you know continues to to do it here um, but this humor just felt more forced yeah I, I personally enjoyed it but yeah well uh, there there were some that were okay but it it wasn't as highbrow humor. It was much more, you know, a kid could Dick laugh. Dick and fart it. jokes? Yeah. Yeah, he's like, L- yeah. Like, much more... <laughs> draws a penis on Blofeld's head. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Blofeld me! <laughs> Blofeld this! Uh, like, much more to Connery's words. Kind of like, at that time, it was funny, but in today's time would have been like, I-, I-, I could go to Austin Powers if I wanted this level well, of here's Well, here's the thing, right? Austin pa- in the Austin in Austin Powers Gold member, it's revealed that Austin Powers again. If you're still listening to this and you've like, oh, I care about Spectre spoilers, fuck you. <laughs> the um, in Austin Powers Gold member, it's revealed that Austin and Doctor Evil are twins, right? Right. And they're like, well, we're gonna make Blofeld more of more of a personal villain for Bond. He's going to be his surrogate brother. But they're not the same height. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, throwback. Yeah. Why does Blofeld have to, like, it's an interesting decision, but why does it have to be there? It's another tick and why this movie is, like, a mess. Like, there's no, there's there's zero reason for that. Well, I, I heard someone... Ex- they saw how well it worked with Star Wars. Now, granted, the name comes from, in the novels, that is the is a character that teaches Bond how to ski, because that's Hauser, the most important yeah. thing in the fucking world. You know why Bond is good at shooting? Because he was trained by the MI6. You know what he did? learned about him fucking hunting. <laughs> you know what he doesn't do in uh, Inspector? Hmm. Ski. Yeah. Yeah, he drives a <laughs> fucking plane like a careless maniac and then leaves uh, Batista alive for him to get his ass kicked on a train right. later. Well, yeah. I heard someone explain like that this version of or these Bond films with Craig were sort of like the uh, Batman Begins of the Bond series. And so yeah. having Blofeld be related to him in this one's kind of like... Cra- uh, having the Joker kill the Waynes? Well, yeah, th- this Bond is Batman, Joe and his Blofeld is his Joker, and that the two created each other in this universe. That's dumb. I, yeah, no, it, it is. I know, I know, I'm it's just saying, cons- like, it it's didn't dumb. have to be there. I personally yeah. enjoy... No, it didn't have yeah. to be. I personally enjoy the film, um... Because I... Yeah, sorry, I, I just... This, like, thought, like, blew in my face here. It's like... The idea that, like, Blofeld's scary in the original series, like, in the original run and stuff, because he's, like, for the longest time, this faceless guy that is this mastermind that is fucking with Bond, and that when it's revealed who it is, it's just a guy. You know what I mean? Bond is a fly in his ointment. Yeah. It's not that he's like, hey, we skied together, and we probably told ghost stories around a fucking campfire. (laughs) Like, enough, enough of learning about Bond's backstory. I don't want to ever, ever, ever learn about Bond's backstory anymore, ever again. Like, Skyfall was as much as I wanted, and that was almost too much. And then this one, it's like pictures of his childhood home and this. And, you know, like I said, remember when we were friends? And it's like, fuck off. I don't care about that. Like, they're, they're, we shouldn't care about that whatsoever, you know? I don't want Rob Zombie's James Bond, like, <laughs> Halloween <laughs> thing. I like the John Halloween Cup stuff. And yeah. Rob Zombie. I don't want to see, you know, I swear <laughs> to God, the next Bond movie is going to be like the skiing years. And it's going to be him and little Christoph Waltz running around, like, you know, learning how to cook marshmallows. And it's like, dude. Uh, you roast marshmallows. Yeah. Well, that's why they failed. They, <laughs> the second one is about how they actually learn how to roast them. But, like, it's just, I don't know. Them. Enough. Yeah, enough. like I would have rather seen Blofeld die and uh, C become the villain. 
Uh, well, you're just no, saying I, that because it's Andrew Scott. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm no, I, I think he would have. He, he's proven himself as Moriarty. I think he would have done great as a continuing I'm, villain for the Bond universe. I'm glad that they didn't kill Blofeld. Yeah, I like Blofeld alive because it, it's. It took him decades to get the rights back. It would suck to reintroduce him just to kill him. In what? the original shooting script for for Spectre, Bond shoots him to death, but in the tunnels below the MI6 building. Yeah, and, but like C could have assumed the mantle of Blofeld. But in this yeah, one, we don't a, have a way of Blofeld it's a, uh, continuing. It's just it's it's just a code name. It's the code name they take. Yeah, yeah. in just this like one, James Bond, right? So everyone's like, "Oh, James Bond." Sliding timeline, guys, and also fiction. But the uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's fucking fiction. Yeah, it's make believe. But the um, you know, I think my so again, this is coming from a place from a guy that actually like enjoys this film quite a bit. I don't think it's the weakest Bond film in 30 years. No, definitely not. I don't think it's the weakest, weakest no, Bond I get, film in 40 years. Yeah. <laughs> if I wanted a weak Bond film, I'd go back to any of Roger Moore's. Ooh. <laughs> or enough. any of the latter, like uh, Pierce Brosnan. Certainly yeah. die another day. Mm-hmm. But, oh, uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> another day. Yeah, God. Oh, Sigmund and speaking Freud, of... Analyze this. No, it, I won't. Is, is, speaking of opening songs, I... Sam Smith's writings on the wall. Yeah, like which is really just a showcase for like, look how varied my vocal range is, and it's it's impressive. I mean, isn't that like yeah, all Bond like there were a few themes? times I was wondering. Well, like, it's like more overt. Like he's got like the baritone sections, and then he's got like the like where he's like hitting the falsetto notes, and it's like great, mm. phenomenal. Yeah, was there <laughs> at any point of the song like a woman was taking over, or was it all? Uh, Sam? It's all all Sam Smith. Yeah. Okay. He has an impressive voice. Confused <laughs> me a few times. Thought he was a woman at. Many a time during the song, but I'd much rather go back to Adele's Skyfall. Yeah, and I think uh, Writings on the Wall is very much a, an effort to duplicate that success. And I feel like it just, again, he's got great talent, but it doesn't duplicate I, a great song yeah. for the film. Listening to it a second time, I was like, it's okay. Like, I, you know, I, I'm, I saw the film a second time with my dad. And I was like, all right, you know, I, I you know, I still enjoyed the film. I, and I kind of warmed up to the theme a little bit. I was like, okay, now that I know what to expect. Because I had purposefully not listened to the song, even though it was released months before the film premiered. I was like, oh, I want to yeah. see it kind of as it was conceived as a companion piece to this film. And then I saw it and I was like, ah. <laughs> and I, in, in my personal opinion, also probably the weakest point of the film is when Bond's uh, with the grieving widow. Oh, and just kind of like fucks her and leaves. <laughs> He's like, awesome, thanks, bye. Yeah. <laughs> like the one meaningless fuck for information. Yeah. Well, he, 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 I don't know about the one meaningless <laughs> fuck. He does, the, he meaninglessly fucks. That's kind of his thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, it really wasn't for a lot of Craig's. For Craig, maybe not as much. Um, and, and again, it kind of throws more to like Connery's old bonds. Yeah. With, like very, what he does in that scene. It is the most traditional. Daniel Craig Bond film. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of people are kind of bristling against that because they're so used to seeing him be so counterintuitive to what the franchise was. Um, I think that's where a lot of the disconnect, a lot of the friction is. Uh, again, I, you know, I felt he kind of earned the, because that's his arc, he kind of earns the traditional Bond films. That's that's how he goes. He get, he becomes the double O agent. He gets the, the familiar trappings as, as his films go on. So I think... For me, it felt like a natural progression. And I, you know, again, I, I dug it quite a bit. Does it have to be two and a half hours? No. <laughs> no. No, there's a lot they could have cut out. Yeah. Does it have to end? It can can it end a lot sooner? Is there? Do I have problems with the ending? Absolutely. fucking lutely Yeah, totally. I'm, am I calling it a perfect Bond film? No. Am I calling it the worst Daniel Craig Bond film? No. I still think it's Quantum Solace. Do I think it's the worst Bond film of the 21st century? No. It's Totally Die Another Day, which is the worst Bond film, period. The end. Unless you count Never Say Never Again or the 1967 Casino Royale. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Josh, Josh's favorite Bond movie? <laughs> the, the claws come out like, ah! Oh! Does <laughs> MI6 need a new fucking layer that isn't so subterranean? Yes. Yeah. But, uh... It could be an office building in the middle of London. Yeah, which is... It like, could, that but that would... well for them. Yeah. Right? It, it could, but I seeing it now, that they would either get fucking teleported into space or a goddamn alternate dimension at this that's point. What, that's what Bond needs to do. It needs to branch into science fiction. Yeah, let's uh, go back I into mean, space. I mean, more into science fiction. You know, that's the highest grossing Roger Moore Bond film. It's my favorite. I, 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 oh, wait, no, wait, no. It's in nominal U.S. dollars. In, a ju- in an inflated U.S. dollars, it's live and let die. Okay. I, I give that's it to Moonraker how, just for the that's, lasers. That's weird how that would make sense. I mean, I I I haven't even looked at it, but like just you saying that, I'm like, 
wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> like, if you take inflation into account, Live and Let Die is Roger Moore's most successful Bond film. If you don't take inflation into account, like just nominal U.S. dollars, it's Moonraker. Those damn laser guns. Yeah. Well, it it's very much a cash-in on, like, obviously Star Wars. Because originally it was supposed to be For Your Eyes Only was supposed to be the sequel that followed The Spy Who Loved Me. They say as much in the original theatrical print, like, on the credits. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't, yeah, it says James Bond will return in a different movie. Yeah. Eyes only, yeah. And then it's like, Your Eyes Only. But then it's like, clearly Moonraker. And because the same year that Spy Who Loved Me came out, so did Star Wars. And so they're like, fuck, we need to cash in on this. And space. It paid off because it was a huge, you know, it was a barn burner, uh, financially speaking. Um, weird how barn burner is like an awesome thing. I would have rather <laughs> burned yeah. a barn I mean, than I see mean, that have movie. Have you ever seen? Have you ever seen white people riot after a sporting event? No, I don't live in Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, That's, Cleveland uh, doesn't riot because of a sporting. Well, I mean, I guess they do. But they riot. They, no, no, <laughs> I saw no. 1995. They riot when <laughs> LeBron James leaves, but they don't win, so they don't really can't riot over much. I guess they riot, maybe riot over losing. Yeah, they riot when uh, Guns N' Roses like cancels their show. Doesn't there. Baltimore <laughs> riot when they win? Well, uh, they ride over lots of yeah, things. Yeah, it's Baltimore. Cool. Yeah. Good okay, and how bad. about Pittsburgh? Do they ride yeah. over everything, too? Um, I, I, I imagine they ride over the Penguins. Basically, yeah, all, those, all those blue-collar towns, I'm Pittsburgh sure. wins a lot. Yeah. Yeah, they win the too, town. They win too often to, oh, to, to burn it to the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in the bull power, power hour. But the... Um, <clears throat> love you, coach. But the... Uh, yeah, I, you know, I think the uh, – can we just talk about the cold open for a second and the fact that, like, the basically the first half of the cold open is one continuous take? Yeah, Pretty and sweet. Bravo yeah. confusing me who I thought was under the mask. Who do you, you think, think was, was under, under the mask? The mask? Oh, I thought it was going to be uh, Blofeld, and, like, Bond just, like, passes him at one point during oh, that. Oh, the, the guy in white, you thought that was going to be Blofeld? The, that he's trailing? No, no, the, the one we're following the entire time. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. No, it's it's awesome. Though. So, old yeah. Danny boy. Yeah. And, of course, like, Day of the Dead, what a fucking, like, so cool. visual, like, the visual icon- iconography of that is just so incredible. And, like, the score that kind of sounds like, you know, Bones, like a per- very percussive mm. beat. Yeah, yeah, I'd say the only opening I like more than that would probably be Golden Eyes. Oh, at the dam. Yeah, sure. I think the it's video t- game helps reinforce that it's too. T- yeah, I was because th- you know this movie made me think, had me thinking about the openings. It's tough because like sometimes it's, it's the best part of the film. Yeah, the, including the, this time. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, if you think about the openings, like the, you know, there's a lot of great openings. It's just Craig by himself. Moonraker's got a great opening. Yeah. Oh yeah. Moonraker's yeah. got. A, Say what a, you will about like lasers opening. in space, but like when he's like skydiving and fighting Jaws in midair, that's that's awesome. Yeah. Maybe, maybe in, in like in my brain, Moonraker uh, Spectre is Daniel Craig's Moonraker because it's like an amazing opening, and then it just slowly unravels to just this ridiculous ending and stupidity. Um, and Jaws falls in love. And well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, again. Well, we have our Jaws in this film too. Yeah, but does Batista, he fall yeah. in love? No, uh, off camera, maybe I don't know. <laughs> but uh, he falls in love with his work. But I mean, like a good example of like where like the technical prowess of like this like one tracking shot which is just so fucking cool and the location which is like Bond is so famous and great for the locations like everything works for this opening. Yeah. It's been a while. Since, well, no, I was about to say it's been a while. Since it's been to Latin America, Quantum Solace. He's totally mm-hmm. in Bolivia. Yeah. But uh, you know, like you look at Casino Royale, and that's a super creative. It's not like a big grand opening, but it's super creative. You know, it gives you a different take on the gun barrel sequence, and yeah. you see him become a double O. Yeah, it's like a noir. I'm mm-hmm. a big fan of the Skyfall opening. Skyfall opening. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was fantastic. If we want to talk about exciting exotic locations. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. That was originally supposed to be India, but they couldn't get the uh, the um, uh, local. Bugs. Well, they couldn't get the the film board, the Indian government, to approve them filming on their like trains. They were like, "No, mm. our trains are usually packed to capacity to the point where yeah, people are." Yeah, I've seen the pictures. Yeah, so they were like, "Okay, well, we'll just film in Turkey." <laughs> and I know that, like, uh, you know, we were talking about Quantum of Solace a lot too, but like, I feel like that has a pretty cool opening too. I mean, it's not; it doesn't hold a candle <laughs> to like the you know. It uh, freezes for a second. That's so weird. Yeah, too long. Yeah, the the random freeze, and then it comes in with the you know dirty riff, but like. 
uh, I, I think, because it's cool because it's like this true, honest to God sequel. Like, you know, the end of Casino Royale and right into Quantum of Solace. Yeah, watch them as a double feature. Uh-huh. Yeah, and you know, and I, and, I, and I like that. And it's this great little bridge to the Casino and Skyfall, which My, are like yeah. mm, fucking, you know. I actually perfect. don't mind Quantum of Solace as much as some people do. Do I think it needed another, like, rewrite or another, like, sure. time, some more time in the editing room and uh, maybe some reshoots? Sure. Because mm-hmm. um, we, we, like, that was really the only bond we kind of watched pre. Um, yeah, well, my th- rationale there was like, I've heard both ways on, on Spectre. Yeah. I watch what's unequivocally the worst in yeah. a Craig Bond film to temper my expectations. To, to clean yeah. your palate. Yeah, <laughs> basically, yeah, as an aperitif. But the, you, yeah, you can't you can't go in right after watching Skyfall. Yeah. Because yeah. oh, nothing's going to live up to that. That would have that. been yeah. a mess. I, I might not have liked the movie. Yeah. <laughs> but the, um, I don't know what would have happened. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you would have liked it less. I, I would have. I would have disappeared. You would have just walked out. Yeah. You would have. You would have just yelled. Well, you in thought Jackson I did. I thought because so, Sam, just, fuck around the house. Because Sam, Sam and I usually like are pretty similar for the most part, not always, yeah. um, but pretty similar with with movies. And so, because like Bridge of Spies, we can almost telepathically we were like, "Fuck this, fuck <laughs> this, fuck this." And that's a movie that feels like five hours. You oh know? my god, I feel so bad. Like because so. As we, uh, I mentioned last episode, I'm working at a movie theater now. We have Bridge of Spies still. And like every time someone's like, oh, oh, we could go watch Bridge, Bridge of Spies. I'm like, uh, I haven't seen it myself. But I, th- in my head, I'm just like, uh, I hope they like it better than Sam and Jake. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, the critics love it. So maybe they saw something I didn't if they did Bravo. A different movie. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. and so we're sitting there. Right? We're going to just telepathically we're like, fuck this, fuck this. And then uh, uh, Steve Jobs. We were Steve both Jobs. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, Jerking. Yeah. <laughs> Leave it to the imagination. Yeah. Um, but Popcorn. during <laughs> um, Popcorn. during Spectre, like when it opened, it opens with the gun barrel sequence. Like the first time you get like the, you know, the classic. Yeah, the, yeah that sequence. was supposed to be like another and, throwback uh, to yeah. the old. Huge grin on my face. Yeah, yeah. I even whispered to myself. I was like, finally. <laughs> and then like then this great opening and then, a, you know, whatever, fine song with octopus people. <laughs> <laughs> and then like, you know, I'm watching, watching. Point. But like I start to realize like during it, I'm just like, oh, no. Like, I'm getting bored. And I remember, like, one of the few... I, I had seen At two... What point, was it Austria? Was that what killed it? Because I will admit that sequence is... While I think there needs to be an action beat there, that wasn't the right one to go it's, with. Yeah, and and it's just... Even when, like, they had the... Where he escapes and he's in the car chase, you know, with Batista. Yeah. It's a, like... It's a fairly... I mean, there's there are two pretty cars, but it's a fairly humdrum kind of, you know... The car chase. You when know? you say car chase with Batista, and I'm mm-hmm. sure that this isn't the way that it goes, but in my head, I'm envisioning uh, them in a traditional car chase yep. where you know, you know, one's chasing the other, and you know, and they're two separate cars. Mm-hmm. Bond's got his cool Aston Martin or whatever, mm-hmm. but uh, Batista is in like a spec, like mm-hmm. a really tiny car that he doesn't fit in. So it's like just, a smart car. Yeah. yeah. And he's just like, his shoulders are like breaking through the windows or whatever. And like his short snagger in the expendables too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's almost or Rodman and double team. Yeah. <laughs> it's a movie where that almost would have fit. Well, and, he's um, in a car. He shouldn't fit in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's a, he's a, a Miata? but, uh, like I want a Miata. but yeah, anyway, you know, it's, it's, it starts to, I was starting to like slow down. I was like, Oh no, no. And then, uh, you know, there's a couple big action sequences on a train with Bond and Batista, and it kind of got me back in. And yeah. then it goes towards what I knew wasn't the end because it's a long movie, but it felt like the end, and that made it a little bit worse. And so I was just kind of like, oh, my God. Like, in, in my head, I was like, fi- I was struggling in my in head. In head, you were just singing, this is the end. Well, because I was just like, this, like, I, in my head, I was like, this kind of sucks. Like, I don't like this. What the fuck's going on? And Sam gets up to, like, like I get, you know, go to the bathroom or whatever, and he doesn't come back. And I'm like, <laughs> did he just was like, fuck this movie? And like left, and so I'm like, oh shit, I don't know. And so like, it was a patented Sam Stone hat. And so we who's... get up and we're like, where's yeah. Sam? And we walk to leave, and he's sitting in the back, like the very back in the chair, and he's a little salute, like, hey guys. And we're like, what the fuck are you doing? And you're like, I need, I, I, like, I need more room. And I was like, fucking more room. Like we have like the the chairs you can lay I all the way my, back in. I had my own row. I had my own row. Yeah, to, to I, just, I know, but like the chairs. Throw his arms <laughs> the ch- up in the, the chairs air. Couldn't, the fuck? The gonna ch- put my hands. The so. chairs couldn't be more bigger, and there couldn't be. But you know, whatever. And and I was just like, okay. And so I remember we walked out, and I can't, and Sam looks at me, and the first moment when like I was even more shocked, he goes, "Pretty awesome, right?" And in my head, I I, I didn't know what to do. I was like, I, uh, and then we like walked <laughs> out to where we could hear people talking, and I was like, I don't know, man. And Sam was like, really? And I was like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> like I was like <laughs> speechless. Like I had just witnessed like uh like 
Sam and I are a gay couple and we have a child we <laughs> like Sam like Sam and I are a gay couple, we have a child we adopted and he and he's saying yeah, fair, his name's Josh. Fair, yes. To be fair <laughs> To be fair, if you guys were a gay couple I feel like you probably would adopt Josh. Yeah. And so we adopt Josh and he sings at a talent show and I think it sucks. And Sam thinks it's awesome. And we both have to drive home and I'm going, I don't know, man. I thought it kind of sucked. And Sam's like, I thought it was pretty cool. That was basically Spectre. Sam, Sam's the supportive father. Yeah. who's just like, no, son, it was great. It was great. I like that you sing Memory from Cats like every other yeah. kid. I'm glad you sang Memory for two and a half hours. But here, listen to fucking Born the Run or anything else. Battle God, of Josh. Meat Out of Hell, Josh. The fuck is wrong with, you, Josh? with you, I would sing fucking Born to Run. <laughs> um, but uh, fuck that, and Born to Run. That reminded me, we were at F, we were at Fye, and there was like a bunch of vinyls, and they had like a like highlight. <laughs> they had a highlight vinyl section, and it was like the vinyls were kind of like you know you like you lean them on top of each other so you can see a little bit of like the left of each vinyl because it yeah, kind of yeah. like overlaps. And I was looking at it, and I see like no doubt, yeah, Tragic Kingdom, and another thing, but in the middle. Like you can barely see. You can see the the. the you can see the the smirking Bruce. Yeah, and I was like, oh fuck no! And I just <laughs> pulled it out and I put like I moved everything, just put it clear center and covered and like everything else up. Everything. And I looked at it and I was like, good. And I just like walked away. <laughs> good. good. Yeah. Good. That's that was what I did for my country this week. Um, <laughs> Dude, well done, Jersey. Jake. Well thank done. You, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But uh, about the fuck we were talking about Bond and the fact about a Bond that I thought it was. I, uh, yeah, I kind of was. Sam was it was correct in assuming where I was kind of losing it. And again, like I'm like it, it's it's you know, I I don't hate it like I hate other Bond movies. And there's not actually there's really not very many Bond movies I truly hate. There's no Bond movie yet. in my opinion. Every single Bond movie is watchable. Yes, um, but the great thing is about it how is, drunk you are. Well, the great thing about it is you don't have to watch them. That's the great thing. Like, They're great background. I can, <laughs> yeah, I can watch Die uh, uh, Die Another Day. I can watch Diamonds Are Forever. But I don't have to watch Diamonds Are Forever. I, I watched uh, Quantum of Solace in the background, and I and, and I left thinking it's not as bad as everyone said. Yeah, it's, and then no. I have to remind myself, oh right, I didn't actually Sit down. watch it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I yeah. like I like perked back up for the scene at the end where he's like, you know, uh, talking to the guy in the desert, and you know, like. Giving him the, the oil. can of oil. And I was like, oh, yeah, I know about this scene. And with They found him with a quart of oil in his stomach or whatever the hell. Two bullets in the back of his head. And mm. with Batista's character, now I know in all the promotional material he was given a name, but did he ever announce what his name was no. No, in the it. film? His name no. was Mr. Hanks, but no. no. It's like the Ewoks. No one actually calls them Ewoks. They just, they're Ewoks. So without any of the promotional material, he would just would have been a nameless henchman yeah. that it doesn't even work with the bad guy really uh he just takes he the works assignment for the organization he, for, he he replaces the uh he replaces the latino guy yeah. well no because they were like who wants to accept the contract the latino guy steps up he's like hey i'll do it yeah. and then they're like okay does anyone object batista walks in yeah. like objects by snapping his neck yeah, and it's like, like I'll take the contract. Well, yeah, he steps in they're yeah, like, he's a contractor. Yeah. He's freelance. They mm-hmm. st- he steps in and <laughs> yeah. and Blofeld's like what are your or, uh, they're like okay, what well, are your credentials? Your credentials. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, so it's like him. he doesn't he, he as Chris says, he's a freelancer. He doesn't actually work for the organization. Uh, I like to think that Spectre clan like they're I mean, I doubt that they would just <laughs> send things They don't out have on, like, time Craigslist. cards that they punch <laughs> in and out and they don't have like resumes. Like at the yeah. end of the day, he walks up and he's like uh, Mr. Blofeld, here's my resume. He's like, let me take a look at this, Mr. <laughs> Hanks. Well, no, because... Uh, uh, Mr. Blofeld, here's... Uh, I don't know why I'm doing this accent for Batista. <laughs> That's fine. Keep going. Here's an accent uh, in the film. Mr. Mr. Blofeld, here's my... Uh, here, here, here are my see, pay stubs from my last trip. Let me see your trip. resume and let me check it out myself. Oh, Hanks, I've waited so long for yeah. this. Mm. Well, yes. no, because... <laughs> you don't have any... Mm. Yeah. <laughs> the guy he kills in the beginning. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Guerra. Oh, is a or, contractor. Oh, Marco Sciarra? Yeah, the guy who kills in Mexico City. No, he's one of the because uh, it's it's like the fucking like criminal Illuminati. They just don't have the door open to like freelancers. You got to have the like the cr- well, a, a way in, yeah. like someone I'm who sure, knows. Someone. I'm sure. I'm sure it's more like the WWE, and this is going to be a terrible analogy <laughs> for you since you well, don't Batista's watch. Batista's already in but, it, but yeah, so. right. Uh, but like you know, Check. you you have you have your your wrestling superstars like the Undertaker because I know you know who that is. <laughs> Fuck uh, yeah. So he wrestles on the WWE. He's employed by the WWE. <clears throat> when he gets a title shot at like the the heavyweight championship, he has to sign a contract for that title shot. So he's still employed, 
And he's and it's not like he's unemployed before he signs that contract. It's just he's getting a contract for that specific like project, if you will. You know? Like a non disclosure act or something like that. Agreement, not act. Or he could just be an assassin like on retainer. Yeah. And then they're like, hey. I'd we, believe that more. We need to kill Mr. White. Who are we going to? Okay. Well, no, Sorry. The, he, he's, I he even, the Undertaker. Yeah, he even invoked you. Undertaker. No, no. I, I mean that he's not, not officially. Not that the Undertaker has been a, 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 a heavyweight champion in the last, like, ten years. Well, I think as like we saw from the film, anyone tied to Spectre, like, has their little membership decoder ring. Yeah. And, and Batista. Their Legion ring. Yeah, and Batista <laughs> does it. Long live the Legion. Uh, I mean, I think the uh, maybe he just turns it inside out like a woman. You know, uh, wait. What are we? Tra- wait. Wait a second. Wait a second. Ring. What are we trying to figure out or here? Engagement ring. Like if, why he's doing it? If Batista's a, uh, an employee of Spectre or just or a, a member freelance. of it or like a he's, yeah. freelancer. Everyone at that table was like in charge of something like a like already the head of a project yeah. and probably all had rings. Well, yeah. my thing is like, what's what's the point? Like, w- w- I mean, if, if have you it, talked to Josh? No, but I, I, know, I know, I know, but I'm trying to like finally like like it, does it matter if he's like Blofeld's like Mr. Hinks killed James or if he just like you know he, he I mean he says out loud kill him or whatever. Well, he's like, not telling him to kill James. He's telling him to kill Mr. Is, White. This is the moment no, 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 that no. Josh he's like, got James. sucked out of the movie though because he's like, he was James. like, wait, but how does he get paid? Is he <laughs> is does, does he get a regular paycheck well, no, that signed Blofeld or is it just like... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Who signs? His, no, I'm saying when he sees James, he's like, "It's been a long time, James." And he turns and looks at him. James is like, uh-huh. he's like, "Oh shit!" shit. And, he starts, and everyone starts shooting. But if, I mean, uh, Mr. Hanks is probably like, "Oh shit!" Time to make the boss look fucking awesome. And he runs out. He's the only one who jumps in the car because nobody else has a car who works for Spectre. <laughs> Even and it's like in a parking lot. The only motherfucker who chases him is Batista in his little he's Prius. The only one fast enough, I guess. Yeah, because everyone else just pulls a gun out and shoots him. They're like, mm, "Too far." <laughs> And as we find out later, pistols can shoot like a fucking mile away because they take a helicopter down. Yeah. But like, um, it's... It, 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 pistols it, 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 are AA guns so in the Bond universe. Again, why does it matter if, he's, what, 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 like, if he, if, if, if he's like the right-hand dog man of, <laughs> of Blofeld? Well, it felt like they tried to make him like a Jaws for the film, but... Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, he's, yeah. He was just a very non-essential gimmick cho- his assignment supposed to be continuing henchmen to follow Bond throughout all the film and yeah. gets defeated really easily and really has just no staying power to the film I, you know I hope honestly I hope he's I don't I mean I, people I, I mean people like are hoping personal opinion man <laughs> people are hoping that like yeah he's still alive because he's great I mean he was he was great he's he a was, presence man he's a great presence and they just beat the shit out of each other on a train it's yeah. like my favorite like moment in the, like this yeah. like just brawl in the middle From of Rush the... with love spy love me they mm-hmm. each have the you know great train live and let die too live and let die yeah, with Baron or the uh Guy with the metal hand, mm-hmm. but Teehee? No, is it? That's it's not Teehee. No, is it Teehee? Yeah. Teehee? Maybe. I don't know if I'd throw that one in with the greats, but it's an, it's it happens. He kicks a he kicks he kicks a a guy with one arm out of a train and goes back to banging uh, <laughs> uh, Jane, uh, Jane, Seymour. Jane Seymour. Yeah, pretty good. We should all we should all be so lucky. Yeah, pretty but the, good. But the actual fight isn't. Like, I mean, oh no! I was just saying it's another fight on a train. Yeah, yeah. It's there's certainly a precedent there, just like there's a precedent for you know. Ejector seats and uh, yeah, we get to see that and lasers in space. Lasers in space, yeah. Golden guns. Golden gun. A golden gun. Yeah, just just the one, <laughs> but the <laughs> singular. But the uh, um, all the golden guns. That's for me. That's the weakest Bond film of the seventies. Yes, Man with the golden gun. I think that's worse than Di- or Diamonds Are Forever. Not 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 for me. <laughs> He's just like no. Diamonds Are Forever is a movie that's made for like no purpose. It's it was, like. It's clear that it goes from very kind of British-minded films yeah. in the 60s to let's make one for American audiences. What do American audiences like? Fucking bullshit, apparently. Yeah, according plenty, to plenty O'Toole and a fat Sean Connery. And uh, It's like if they got yeah. William Shatner to come back and play fucking uh, what's-his-face on Next Generation. They're like, Kirk? They're like hey, well, they have one episode with uh, Picard, and they're like, mm-mm, no. Nah. Like, 20 years from now, it'll be everyone's favorite episode, but... No, the second episode we're bringing back Fat William Shatner, and we're just going to shit the bed, and that's that's. I mean, it's it's diamonds. That's are what for, the movie was for. Di- <laughs> diamonds are forever. Yeah, it's just a mess. I like Generations. <laughs> I'm a fan of Generations. Yeah. So am I. But There's I, weak moments in Generations, sure, but as I've, it's okay. <laughs> it was a good next gen film. Yeah. Um, but oh there is some God. bed shitting in it. Yeah. Oh, Batista's yeah. going to be in the Kickboxer reboot in 2016. Mm-hmm. Sweet. 
I'm so happy he got the because he personally campaigned for the part in in uh, Inspector. So I was yeah, he was good. Yeah, you know he's certainly not what's wrong with that film. No. Um, yeah, and I, and, but he and, contributes. And, to and it. I, you know, you know, my uh, thing is for a movie that as long as it is, I don't feel the runtime so much. But what I do feel is that it, it feels rushed. Which for a movie that long with that much space to breathe is weird. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's kind of off putting. Like, uh, did it did it feel at any point kind of like a kite dancing in a hurricane? You know, just kind of just like the ending. Yeah, just the ending. The ending. Well, the ending is something truly special. For, because and that's just uh, you know, again, people are on two both sides of the fence. That's I'm I'm dancing on the fence like like a cat. Okay. Um. <laughs> okay. So like, but yeah, the end for me was something that it was like. Because uh, you know the big hoo-hoo-ha going around was that there was no ending when they were filming, and also this movie cost. They went into principal photography, principal photography without an ending. Yeah. yeah, and it shows. And but like the thing is, this movie cost three hundred million dollars. Two forty-five after tax rebates. Two forty-five. <laughs> Two hundred and forty-five million dollars to make a James Bond movie. Yeah, yeah. It felt like it was all spent on the cold open. Uh, I mean, that's 15,000 extras in that cold open. So, And, of course, they all had to be... Because they didn't film that on Day of the Dead. They filmed that at the beginning of the year. Mm-hmm. Day of the Dead's November 2nd. Um, so they had to recreate all the... You know, build the floats and everything. God, it's so cool. I'm just getting me thinking about that. Uh, a lot of it, I think, was location shooting. Um, you know, booking Mexico City. One of the busiest uh, world capitals uh, on the globe is... Uh, was a very expensive. I think that if you look at the Sony hacks, I think that was cited as the biggest. Mm. That and the the car chase in Rome. Yeah. Um, the the whole sequence in the snow that we were talking about, where he doesn't ski, which is funny. Yeah. Like feels like a totally like unnecessary. Again, there needs to be an action beat there, but a car chase with a plane is not the action beat yeah. that yeah. you should probably go. Again, with. like that's where it feels like. And when I say it's a Roger Moore film starring Daniel Craig. I really like Roger Moore, and I really like Daniel Craig, but it's... Never it, shall the twain meet. No, never shall the wieners touch. <laughs> um, and they touched. Something that Jake has never said. <laughs> never. And hopefully never will again. <laughs> but uh, it, the ending... As the Josh ending, crosses his fingers for a wiener touch. <laughs> the ending leads to some interesting questions to, like, what's going to happen next, you know? Because it's, it's, yeah. it's basically the season three of Arrow ending where it's like, I'm happy. <laughs> and it's like, well, what I the quit fuck? For the third time this season, what's yeah. gonna happen? He goes back to the island. He's gonna, uh, c- he's gonna come back with sleeves and a hood. Uh, I mean, like, this is what I'm now call me Jimmy Bond. <laughs> Teams up with uh, Constantine. Yeah, well, this is- <laughs> you failed this. Don't city. tease him. Yeah. Don't tease. <laughs> but what I'm really hoping they don't do next is he marries the chick. Blowfield gets out. They- they kill her, and then oh, they wow. just restart the whole, I got married, and then my wife died, and now I'm even bitter It's interesting, because Blofeld like, makes a point to like glare at the pair of them like embracing on the bridge afterwards, so he's like, I'm going to fucking mm-hmm. fuck people up. I'm going to fucking... Cause yeah, you know. He's going to find her. He's going to kill her. Yeah, he's going to use his special set of skills, but... Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah. She's going to have a little bomb aneurysm go off in the back of her head, and then Tom Cruise is going to come in and say, fuck it, I'm taking over this franchise. Yeah. Just, uh, what was the, okay, now that, because Spectre's the last espionage film of the year mm-hmm. to come out, my favorite's still Kingsman. To yes, be me too. Though. Me too. Yep. Dead Air. Man from Uncle. Mission Impossible. Kingsman. Josh, Josh is thinking Kingsman, that's what's Spectre. happening. I'm just, I know, I'm yeah. saying, I'm yeah. saying, yeah, Josh is thinking. <laughs> I still see, well, I see Keensman more as a Mad Max comic book movie, so I'm going to give it to uh, Mission Impossible. A comic book ex- espionage movie? Yeah. Well, because it's based off of a, a comic. A, a, yeah. An, an, an espionage comic book. Yeah. So I'm going to give it to uh, <laughs> Mission Impossible. Okay. I mean, James Bond is back in comics now. In Varger. By, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. By Warren Ellis. I haven't given by the way, it's, in, it's, it's not an espionage. By the way, Sam, it, it is in your box, by the way. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. I love it in my box. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so you're going to go to Mission Impossible? Yeah. yeah. That's a good one. Um, for me, it is between, well, no, it's, it's Kingsman. I, yeah, yeah. Kingsman is just a lot of fun. For me, it's between Kingsman and Kingsman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kingsman, for some reason, I don't know what it was. Just, just, just a lot of fun. Just, just oh, a yeah. good time at the movies. It was, it was great. doesn't have to be <laughs> deep, guys. No, <laughs> yeah. it does not. And the, and I think 
the reason a lot of this, this these espionage movies worked because they weren't deep. Well, I, the thing, say what you will about Daniel Craig's Bond or the quality of his films or whatever. He has made Bond films feel like an event again. Oh, fuck yeah. You know, I would certainly I would watch the Pierce Brosnan movies in the theater, but it was just kind of like, oh, Bond movie in theaters. Cool. Yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. Well, what I liked about Craig's was it felt back more to like how Brosnan started with Golden Eye. Kind and then a- as Craig's went on, they didn't get progressively worse until we got to like how Quantum of Solace kind of fizzled out of the end and how Spectre really lost its ways after the opening. What breaks you on Quantum? I think for me it's after, it's the middle of Quantum that kind of like, I like the book. It's when, it's when they, it's when they jump out of the plane and they're just sitting there and they're just like, <laughs> he's going after the water. Yeah, we're going to go walk. And there's like a that music video, a, a 90s rock moment where they're they just fade like, in. Yeah, they fade in. I mean, it's kind of like with Quantum, it's like, it literally didn't make any impression with me. Like, I'm having a hard time remembering the strong beats from it, whereas all of other Craig's, I can remember moments from them I really did enjoy. The beats I like the most in Quantum Solace. I like the opening. Mm-hmm. The opening foot chase in Sienna is okay. Um, the Opera House gunfight is, is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like the ending in the uh, hotel in the middle of the desert. Yeah. The... Airplane chase sucks. The boat oh, chase yeah. sucks. Um, yeah, boat chase is like unnecessary. Both of those chases are unnecessary. And the plane one is like Bond and planes for the most part in the Craig u- like universe. If he's in a plane, it's probably a stupid scene. <laughs> um, although the plane stuff, he obviously he's not in a plane, but the plane stuff and uh, dealing with the airport and stuff in uh, Casino Rail is awesome. But yeah, I mean, I I you know I really dig the intro, the the the, the cold open uh, minus the freeze frame and the theme song. Freeze frame. Yeah, um, I I I do really like the 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 foot chase, um, where they're like dangling on like the wire the wires and stuff like that, um, and it's just this like really intense crazy moment because that movie got shit on because it wasn't a guy who'd really done any action movies before. Yeah, it was Mark Forster who did Finding Neverland. Yeah, um, and I, I feel like you know he did a pretty good job. I mean, like granted, like the the opening is like super jarring and in your face, and whether that's because he didn't know how to necessarily handle it or because he was trying something different, I felt it worked. Yeah, Quantum Solace I think is a consequence of the uh, writer strike mm-hmm. back in uh, because that if you're if we're talking movies that need another rewrite, I mean Spectre could probably use another polish, but fucking Quantum of Solace needs it so much more. Mm. Um, Spectre just could have used also a lot of work in the editing room more, still. More, for me, yeah, with Spectre, it isn't so much a rewrite so much as it is. They were like, I think, to bring back Mendes, they were like, make your Bond movie. Well, Spectre, and we got a director's the thing, cut. The thing with Spectre <laughs> yeah. is like, it doesn't feel like it ever was finished. Like, they were kind of just like, all right, we got this, we're going to shoot 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 this. Uh, okay, we can kind of let's end this kind of here, but it there the, there's like no rewrite because I don't feel like half baked. Yeah, it feels like it never was like truly finished, and that that was like the biggest problem I have with it. Joking aside about what you know, stupid scenes or whatever, is that it just felt so like uneven. And you know, we're talking about James Bond, like it, you know, there's a lot of uneven shit that happens James Bond movies, and they're fun, and, and that's yeah. The but thing. I think with like Skyfall and Casino Royale. Like they were swinging for the fences every. Oh, and they yeah, and they you know, and they did it every time that they're like, we're gonna not just make a good Bond film, we're gonna make a good film because mm-hmm. fucking Skyfall won a BAFTA, you know, the British basically the British equivalent of the Oscars, mm-hmm. um, and they're like, you. The problem is you can't. If you try to make a BAFTA winning film, chances are you're not gonna make a BAFTA winning film. Yeah, yeah you I, just, just got to make the movie. I guess the problem was. Uh, Spectres, they tried to throw in so much more that didn't make any of Craig's Bond films his. Like, it was so much more to everything else that happened in all the previous other Bond films that that's why it kind of just fell apart. Well, Mendez went in, I think, first off, he didn't want to come back initially. Oh, yeah. That's always. (laughs) Yeah. That's always rough. Um, That's why they, it was a three-year gap instead of two. Um, so they could let him do his uh, theater obligations because he wanted to go back to directing stage work. And I think knowing that this was going to be it, because there is this kind of a, like Josh was alluding to, there is kind of a sense of completion, like Mm -hmm. just like a finite sense to this film. Mendez goes in knowing this is probably going to be the last Bond film he ever directs. He's like, I'm going to make it my love letter to the entire franchise. 
um, more so than the 50th anniversary film, which is why we get all those e- nods and Easter eggs to the to the classic Bond films. You know, he's like, I love this character. I love this franchise. Let me, you know, bring back the things that I love. Maybe that that's why it. Craig looked like he didn't have fun in some instances. Like, <laughs> this isn't what I was doing before. I'm doing the work that every other fucking Bond actor did before me. I, I'm not making my mark in this film. I'm making the mark everyone else did. Was he like this? Because, I mean, like, you know, he's, I feel like there's like a lot of tongue-in-cheek stuff with him being like, oh, like, I am done. Fuck this. I'll slash my wrist if I have to play Bond again. I, you know, I for some reason, like, every year that passes... Like, everything becomes more and more big news, social media, blah, blah, blah. Was he like this after a- the other Bond movies? After, um, certainly not the first two. Mm-hmm. After um, after Skyfall, he's like, yeah, man, they got me on for, for two more. But, you know, this one was a lot of, this one was fun to make, and we made a damn good movie. Mm-hmm. Um, he, you know, the slash my wrist comment, I think that was kind of, even when that first came out, I thought felt that was kind of taken out of context, and he kind of clarified it in an interview later. He was just like, "Look, well, I mean, again, I just you know, I just finished making this movie. I'm on a fucking press tour for this movie, and it's, it's like running a marathon. Mm-hmm. And as you're wrapping up the marathon, somebody comes up with a microphone and is like, "Hey, you want to do another marathon?" Yeah, and it's like your immediate answer is "fuck you." <laughs> yeah, I mean, to read that in text, you're like, "Oh shit!" But I'm sure it was like the very um, sarcastic. You know, yeah. Daniel Craig, British s kind of humor thing. Yeah, I think a, a more honest look at it is like when he's on like Colbert and stuff. Mm-hmm. And he's just that was like, fun. Yeah, because um, I, I, I want to see him again. Yeah, you know? he's got one left on his contract. Yeah. Um, so because he his deal, he was only contracted through um, basically through Spectre when he was, but when he was coming off the success of Skyfall, they extended his contract. And gave him a considerable raise, so he's got that one extra movie left. Mm. And honestly, he's at what? This is the first movie where, well, no, with Skyfall you got it too. He's starting to show his age. Yeah, you can tell with his like his hands and his neck skin. Yeah, well, <laughs> like a- <laughs> again with the cold open under the mask, I was seeing gray hair, and I was like, that can't be Bond. And then takes off the outfit, and it's like. Well, fuck me. Brosnan was visibly graying by World Is Not Enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they never had any moments in those films where it's like, okay, that ain't Bond in that disguise. And then then it's like, oh, well, shit. I like his hair better in... (laughs) in, I like his hair better in Spectre than I do in Skyfall. Skyfall, he's got the really close-cut, like, crew, like, military cut. And it kind of makes his head look funny-shaped. Yeah. Well, uh, he's just a funny-looking guy. (laughs) Yeah, but <laughs> women eat it up, man. Well, yeah, as my mother loved Craig as Bond, and one of the reasons for it was he. she said he had the stocky frame and built figure that reading the book, she always pictured Bond should look like. Mm-hmm. When I when I read, I think the closest to the literary Bond, at least for me, is Timothy Dalton. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Uh, this guy that, like... It's my favorite. Yeah, well, Dalton's Bond clearly hates his job, and I think he's the only Bond that really does. Um, I also feel like Dalton's the only one who took the books as, like, source material. As, like, gospel. Yeah, like a Shakespearean actor would. Yeah, he'd carry them on set and read them and be like, hey, um, stop using fucking gadgets. (laughs) I have a gun. I just shoot them. You know, or you know, uh, you know, I, you know, I, you know, be intense. I'd be this. Yeah, like Sam said, he hates his job. The two movies he has, like, at one point, he's like, fuck off to MI6. In, in Living Daylights, they're like, you know, this isn't right. And he's like, fuck you. And then the second one, he's like, fuck you, I quit. <laughs> you know, the third one would have been him killing fucking M, you know. He's you know, <laughs> just going up the ladder. But, yeah, I, that's the thing I liked most about Daniel Craig. Or, uh, well, Daniel Craig, I like that too. But, like, mostly about Timothy Dalton and why he's my favorite is, like, you buy it, you know. Well, Craig kind of has moments in this one where he's kind of showing his disdain towards MI6 a bit as well. Well, again, he's doing that thing where he's like... I know what I need to do. It's gonna. It's the right thing to do. It's gonna take these guys down, and it's gonna show MI6 that it needed to happen in the first place. And then MI6 is a thing. Every movie, you know, every time he does that, not every movie, but he's just like, MI6 is like, Bond's crazy. He's a rogue agent. We got to take him out. Oh shit! He just unearthed that. Oh wait, he just fixed it. Oh shit! It's over. Good job, Bond. And then he comes back, and it he's gives like, you the impression that. 007 is the only double O agent that actually like does stuff. That's yeah. That's why I was like, I would have loved to have seen like. No, there's a double o, like a human double o nine walking around like what the fuck's my car, man? Because he steals his car, you know, and then wrecks it. 
But, you know, I mean, little things like that, just to make the agency feel a little more lived in, you know, that it's not just M, Monty Penny, Q, and yeah. Bond. 007's Maybe. the only one that shows up in London when it's, like, under threat. He's yeah. like, hey, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe in the next one we'll see him team up with the Dunder well, Double O and will remake GoldenEye. I don't necessarily want, like, a team up, but I would love... I want another team up. Like, Bond walks in and there's Daniel 005, and you know? Yeah. How many times oh, have God. like double O agents died under like Roger Moore's watch? Yeah. Well, like, Octopussy. Octopussy, you know, clown double O mm-hmm. agent gets killed. Mm-hmm. Um Scaramanga off camera kills double O three. That's mm-hmm. where he finds the first gold bullet. Yeah. Goldeneye. Um, well, Goldeneye. Well, they're talking about Roger Moore. Oh. Yeah, and yeah. I'm also talking about ones that like die. Mm-hmm. Like and I guess double O six dies, but Twice. But yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Once presumed dead, and second, like three times over, <laughs> <laughs> just to make the fucking beating, sure. The but fall, but the thing, and the dish. Here's yeah, the thing, and the explosion. Here's the radar, thing. I guess. Like you can, for example, like, uh, like like loving Judge Dredd and the comic books and stuff like that. Like Dredd is like the fucking judge, right? Like everyone knows he's the most famous judge, Mega City One, blah 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 blah. But one of the things that makes Mega City One and the Judge Dredd comic books so great, which is why. I'm hoping if they ever make a Dread movie, they expand on this, is you get to meet other judges. You know what I mean? Like, at no point in the comic book does, like, having another judge show up be like, oh, shit, Judge Dredd, isn't that cool? Like, this is not a Judge Dredd comic, you know? You meet a ton of judges in the Sylvester Stallone, dare I say, superior Dread movie. You see judges, but like I said, you don't get to know judges. Yeah, they get their cannon fodder. Like, you don't get to meet any of them. The the, the ones that, uh, what's her name, that figures out that Dredd's a clone? Oh, Hershey? But I mean, again, yeah. so yes, you get to see Judge Hershey, and then in Dread, you get to see, you know, Judge Anderson. But like I'm saying, let's see some double O agents just, like, walking around, you know? Let's, like, meet a fucking double O agent. Last time we see multiple double O agents is the world is not enough. Mm-hmm. When they all get briefings uh, to find King's Killer, and double O seven does an initial, and he's like, what the, the, the fuck? D- could you imagine, like, w- like working at... MI6 and like 007 would be the fucking worst. Like we were talking about it, like the fucking worst. How many times do you see your coworker have sex? Yeah, because you like, see 007 have sex a lot. And like you see M, M is like, all right, guys, no banging chicks, no killing unless 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 authorized, unless authorized. Um, no expense accounts. The entire like, time, yeah. looking right at. Well, 007. no, no, Double no. Seven's not even there, right? And they're like, always show up on time. Yeah, yeah he always skips out. On and then Double O Seven shows up, and Double O Nine's like, the fuck, dude. And M's like, just. Well, they you have stop like the nuclear bomb from going off again, okay? <laughs> Go fucking file this. And they have like, a file. drop the Cold War from starting up. A th- yeah, fifth where's time. the where's the where's the sitcom of like all the other double O agents who have to deal with that shit? Well, like, no, they have know. like a dry erase board of like days since <laughs> last incident, <laughs> yeah. and 007's picture is just pasted above it. Yeah, he and walks there's in. There's just like uh, an infinite sign. Yeah, he right walks underneath. in and just pisses on the computer of 005. He's like, fuck you. And he just like goes into M's office. You can't go in there yet. Technically, 005 would be a uh, higher class agent. Well, I mean... N- no, the the numbering system isn't actually based on merit. It's just uh, just numbers. Yeah. Based on Like employee numbers. Ah, oh, that's sick. No, I, I, thought, I thought the same. Like but, in uh, GoldenEye, they made it seem like 6 was the superior agent to 7. He might have been the in superior his, agent, well, yeah. but In his own mind, he was better. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, I was always better, but that doesn't mean he was like officially Brainland. better. Mm-hmm. Huh. Yeah. No, I thought the same thing for the longest time, and then... Well, tits. Yeah. Because... Bond is clearly the superior one because they give him everything to do. Yeah. Except the, in this one. What are the adventures of 004? Yeah. But no, but honestly, like, if MI6... Um, and also, real quick, they're all 00 agents. Does that mean there's a 0010? I think, actually. That's silly. Yeah. 00100. Yeah. yeah. But, like, but, uh, if, M- if MI6, like, actually restrained Bond from doing the job because they clearly don't want him to do in so many of the movies... The world would be over like five, six, seven times. You the know what I mean? The world would be enough. Yeah. It'd be blown up. <laughs> yeah. Blow felled up. Yes. It'd be blown up. It'd be <laughs> down. It'd be dead. <laughs> You'll be dead. I don't think he... Well, I'm trying to think the last time he plays for... Keeps? Well, for the state of the world. like, Or for the world to like not... For humanity to survive. Because it's usually like localized stuff. It yeah. kind of would have been in this past one if well by letting specter run wild like you got it's, it's all leading towards that you know it's what i mean leading towards like a specter regime yeah but uh like i think what, what i mean is like like nuclear apocalypse mm, like or, spy who love me shit yeah or um or like exterminating the earth with nerve gas a la moonraker mm. um, i mean creating the perfect what about, uni- uh, world? the one uh 
Uh, it was one of the Bro- Brosnan ones, the one with the the dude with the bullet in his brain, so he couldn't feel pain. World's not enough. Is mm-hmm. that world's is not enough? Was there, Wasn't there like a? Uh, he's trying to nuke uh, Istanbul. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a city. It not, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. no, it doesn't count. <laughs> um, we're we're talking about the world here. Yeah, we can we can live without Istanbul. Sorry to all of our listeners from Istanbul. <laughs> yeah. Go nine. Well, he's just trying to stop a uh, financial meltdown in London. But. Uh, you hit one market like that with that EMP blast. Well, shit, the entire city. the entire global market. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's domino effect. And yeah. then from there, yeah, yeah. Just like yeah, I mean, he, tomorrow never dies. Is trying to stop a war between China and the UK. Because we were talking about like license to That's kill. Pretty close. Like in a global sense, how microscopic license to kill is. Yeah, he's threatening. He his master scheme is get the DEA to back off. Otherwise, he's going to shoot down two airliners. Yeah. yeah. Oh, what are the times we were like? And Bond's like kind of like again stumbles across it. Stop! You know, fuck it! Hey, look at this! He shines a flashlight. I'm gonna go burn Sanchez. But look at this! Yeah, yeah. well, and like a lot of the other Bonds, we had a lot of really great interactions with Felix and the Central Intelligence Agency and working with the U.S. government. And this one, how many real dealings with Felix well, to be fair, have we gotten I feel like with we'll never Craig? See Jeffrey Wright. I don't think we will. But to be fair, Felix has been seen or mentioned in three of the four Daniel Craig Bond movies. So I mean, like. If in in terms of like, was he the one that was uh, playing? Yeah, poker I'm with him in, in here, casino. Rooms? Okay, buy you in with the CIA. That's right. I, uh, I'm so bad with my got with my seconds. minor Bond characters. Yeah, I, I mean, I like Felix Slider a lot. He's great because you get like that. You know that he's the one that uh, kind of you know that bitten off by the shark, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And in Brosnan's, we had a few KGB agents. You know that he was buddy buddy with as well. Stand well, he's like, yeah, he's not. <laughs> he's not. Arena, like, take a hike. Yeah, he's not the best at making friends, but I do like the Felix Bond interactions. Yeah, like maybe in this final Craig one, we'll get like a greater army interaction. of two, yeah. army of two, where they just st- back to back and fucking ar- or it, uh, aggro vision. We're like, nee, 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 nee. it's like slow mo. Nee, 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 nee. He's like, James, I'm empty. Give me a clip, James. <laughs> as long as neither of them get Let's wounded see. by bullets and they have to stop the bleeding with a tampon. <laughs> <laughs> no, fair enough. Wait, wait, when the hot, you know, huh? Army of Two. Yes. Does yeah. that happen in Army of Two? Yeah. Basically. Yeah. What's oh. Army of Two? The video video games. game. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well. No, no, well, they wouldn't be able to because in England tampons are a luxury item. Well, they have an expense account. He work- <laughs> and they work for the CIA and the MI6. Yeah, you know Q's probably got like a fucking exploding one he just hand him. <laughs> well, that would be counterintuitive. Just pull on this string. Yeah. <laughs> it's my lunch, 007. <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, well, titties. You guys got anything to add? <laughs> no, I'm pretty spectred out. Fallout coming out soon. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I keep yeah. seeing that the, the uh, I'm a wanderer. I'm a one, dude, the live action uh, commercial. Ron, 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 it's Ron, fucking Ron, awesome. Ron. So it was a really great yeah. trailer or trailer. Yeah, by the time you guys have well, the listening audience has listened to this episode, I would have already been playing for hopefully at least twenty four hours straight. <laughs> <laughs> and you were literally he was literally rubbing his hands together. Yeah. It was like I yes, I I, I, I yes. dare I say that was picked up by the mic because it was so <laughs> rough that he was just like Yes. Yeah. Indeed. <laughs> Well, they have it, so maybe you know. Let us know. Yeah, you got yeah. <laughs> Words, Sam. What, what great, what great podcast. Yeah, that's just me. Like <laughs> me, this, this is my interest level. <laughs> let me wait until I start yawning to talk. But uh, no, yeah, I'm yawning, you dick. let us uh, let us know what you guys think of Spectre because you know everybody seems to be all across the board. Um, I hated it. Yeah, just preemptively. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, let us know. Uh, I guess pick up Fallout 4 if you've got a next gen console that is no Wii U. Um, when does when do next gen consoles become current gen consoles? When the next gen comes out, the next gen is so so so, so the once, next gen once, is once, current gen. Uh, what? What Sam's calling next gen is current gen. Yeah, that's just the the term. Like super seventy millimeter. Yes, <laughs> see it in gl- glorious super seventy millimeter, which uh, is just seventy millimeter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like Super Eight. Unless you want to, unless you were watching that Nicolas Cage film, Eight Millimeter. Mm. Yeah, mm. that's not so super. Did that ever make your cage a thon? No. No. Oh. Eh, there's there could be another one down the road, but it's I'm not chomping at the bit for that one. Fair enough. Mm. Mm. But mm. yeah, let us know what you think. Go play Fallout Four, and 
Have a super fucking day. I don't know. This has been another installment of Catching Up. I'm Sam. I'm Chris. I'm Jake. I'm Josh. The writing's on the wall, bitches. Thank you very much. Good night, Eric Bonner. (sighs) Damn, that beat was dope.